good morning I opened the tent to go and do my morning uh, loops only to discover this that is what a campsite looks like when a howling gale and lashing rain drives everybody to bed early uh, we managed to make a meal and we sat huddled under the canopy that fortunately we had the gazebo and the boys put some shade cloth around for some protection but man we were all in bed by half past eight the, the weather just drove us in it was arctic and the gale anyway we've woken up this morning to a promise of a uh, a cloudy day the weather tells us but with less wind so we'll see how the day goes and because he's under orders that he's not allowed to work my boy is um, still in bed makes a change usually it's the other way around he's out filming and doing in the morning and I'm the one uh, lying in bed and having tea brought to me I'm Andrew Cynthia White join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world The wind's not blowing. Welcome to part two of my family holiday down at the sea where I've been told emphatically that I am not allowed to work. Given that you are now watching this video, how do you think it's going? Well, it's nothing like it was last no, night. Was it was gale force. Was, it was gale force last night. And I came out here. What did the camera do? I heard no, it, it was something. my watch. Was Sorry, watch. being intrusive. Stupid Apple Watch. Yes, I know. I know. You know what an Apple Watch is like? Reminds me of. Reminds me of a Pajero goes ping you breathe in ping you breathe out ping you set that ping it's stood up ping you're thinking about breakfast ping the difference is mr know-it-all with an apple watch you can turn the sound off with a pajero <laughs> you have you can to start no, you can, no, no 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 you you can turn the sound off with a pajero too just drive it into the sea that would work but just don't Go near it. Just don't put the. Just don't drive it ever. Oh, this is amazing. Should we show the viewers? Oh, it's an angry sea. We should show the viewers. Nah, no, nah, let's not. Let's go back. Should we feel how the temperature is? Yeah. Oh, my feet are cold. Sand is icy. This is an Australian summer beach holiday. It's the first of December. Good morning. We're from the Australian Tourism Board, and we're not having a particularly good, good shoot. Time. <laughs> I don't know. What's up on the beach there? I said, wind is cold. It's cold. It is freezing. What is it on the beach? Ah, it's a boy. Ah. Uh. I think it's a girl. Um, uh, uh, definitely a boy. Oh look, sun's come out. Oh. That's promising. What the bird us complaining? How clear the water is there. So how would you, using a very simple, the simplest of cameras, it's the GoPro style action camera, and you want to get a shot which is telling the audience that you're collecting beautiful artifacts from the beach. How would you shoot it? Well, obviously I'd need an establishing shot that I'm at the beach. 
so I would film the fact that I'm at the beach. Very good, yes. Okay. Then I would, uh, I've already collected the shell, so kind of faking this. I would put my shell down. Yes. Not have a... <laughs> Not have it looking like it's already been collected. Right, very good, very good. And then what would you do now? This is the I, critical shot. I, I would walk into frame and say, oh, wow. Where would you put the camera? Oh, right. Let me give um, you a clue. Who is the hero here? The shell. The shell. In other words, if the shell is the hero, make sure the shell is predominant in, in shot, because the shell is the hero. You're okay. telling them about the shell. So what do you do? Something like this. Take it out of frame. Now you've established who the hero is. You can do that in a really big close-up, which is the probably the most important out of all of the shots, is that really big close-up. Yeah, that's the hero. Now, if you like, you can do another lovely close-up. It's perfect. Of you having a look at it. It's absolutely perfect. And don't, fire, don't forget to go back to the re-establishing shot. So stand there, look at your shell, I'll point the camera at you, and when I give you action, do whatever comes naturally. Were you handing it, were you holding it before with both hands, or I think you were holding it with both hands? Yes. Okay, and action. This is my item for my collection. Every trip I have, pick up something, a stone, a shell, something, to memory as a memory of the trip this will be it for this trip andrew teaching Gwyn to film she's going to be such a you know come in such a but she's going to be a subtitles that he's not allowed to hold the camera then i better learn to hold it myself hey. i don't know what you're talking about i really don't know what you're talking about i reckon it's going to take a whole day for the swell to flatten before we can fish in the sea. Okay. I'm just saying how big this, the breakers are and how it's going to take the whole day for the uh, swell to die down. Those are big, 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 big breakers. So we'll have we'll have to be patient and wait for Wednesday. The weather forecast says Wednesday is going to be the perfect day. Uh, today is Tuesday. Oh no! Why? Hold up, Hold up your finger. <laughs> Why? This, I better not see this on the internet. Why? This, I better not see this on the internet. Why? This, I better not see this on the internet. No! Lush. Oh. This is an advertisement. So we've just got a message, radio message from Andrew and Cam. They went off to the estuary to go and fish, but apparently they've managed to get the X trail well and truly bogged. So we're now on a bit of a rescue mission. Um, they've walked to a point apparently where wait, I can fetch them with the Corolla because, um, well, Andrew is of the opinion that uh, we won't manage to, us girls won't manage to pop the, you know, pull down the camper and do everything. And yeah, we could prove him wrong. We put all that crap away for nothing and then I don't get to drive, did I call it the troopy? And I don't get to drive the truck. I'm going to be very upset. So, Liam is busy spearfishing. I'm going to take the Corolla, go and rescue them. They're going to come back. Fetch do the whole camper and go and do this macho boy thing and meanwhile we will continue with our face masks. Gwyn's taken a little bit too far because it's a bit soft there but basically we left the camp with a battery operated tire pressure monitor. It's the second time this one has let me down so I'm going to have a ceremon ceremonial destroying of the tire pressure monitor because uh, it doesn't work and we now have to go and get the cruiser, bring the cruiser here, and hoik the X-Trail out. So you didn't have a camera, is this your wife's I didn't have fault? A, no, I didn't have a camera. I didn't, because we you're left on half holiday. Our we were so yeah, keen on coming the, fishing, yeah. we forgot <laughs> half of the important equipment. Anyway, let me see if I can get out of here without it bogging.
yeah no I felt it go and um, I'm wise I didn't dig in I just stopped You, we've really got the B team on the camera operation. This <laughs> I'm on hard ground. Okay. I'm on uh, well, uh, not very hard ground, but it's downhill from here. It'll, it'll go out fairly quickly. So, um, shall we go and get the Land Cruiser? Yes. Okay. The girls and I were both were all three very disappointed that you didn't trust our ability to bring the Land Cruiser, so we decided to stuff you. No, it was <laughs> only because of the awning. It was because of the awning because I couldn't pack away the awning myself the other night. I, I struggled so much with the awning. And I knew Liam wasn't there and he's tall. And you guys are all short. You would really struggle with the awning. That's why I was worried. That was yeah. the only reason why I was worried. I promise you. All right. We must be pretty close to the road. Well done for not getting the car stuck, Mum. Yeah, we, when she came over, we saw it. And we realized when we walked back it was that very actually soft. getting the Corolla through there would actually be quite difficult. Uh, but we only realized when we were walking it on our feet, so we were we were okay We could we not for the life of us close that That for that that last bit there yeah, yeah. So the girls actually did a very good job packing up uh, I thought they would uh, battle a bit putting up and packing up the awning because it's so high. It's not easy to pack up But they, they did a very good job actually, so uh, we're now going to rescue the extra Toyota trumps my son. No, I never look at it like that. I, I, no, I don't look at it like that. We could have got through that. We had bad equipment. But we, we forgot some key equipment and the stupid tire pressure. So we don't know what the tire pressures are. We have no idea what they are. So you, you, you need to know because you can't see when it's in the sand. You can't see its shape. So you can't look at it and say, oh, like you can on hard ground. On the soft ground, once you're in the soft ground, you cannot tell that it you know. So, a bit powerless, to be honest with you. And the reason we didn't let down the air was because we wanted to test the vehicle and its capability. Yeah, we just, I often do that, and I'll go drive and say, and eventually say, yeah, and that's what we did. We said, mmm, air down. Didn't we? Yeah. We weren't stuck when we said, mmm, ah, air down. No. We weren't stuck. So, we did, we did the... Right where we need to get in. And um, so we didn't really do anything abnormal. It was just that then the tire pressure gauge failed. And then, ooh, so we let some air up, we guessed. I think we got it wrong. Yeah. Um, but. And then the bees were there rushing us, so we went thinking clearly. And then there were bees, a lot of bees that uh, can got stung. So there'll be bees there now. It's going to go into four. I'll just almost slow down to go into four. There you go. So your extra did better with its hard pressure pressures than this is doing with its hard pressures on this piece of ground. You just cruise through that. Mm, you did. Because you're light. You've got no weight at all. So don't, um, underest in, don't underestimate the, 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 the off-road ability of that little car. It's really good. X-Trails are lovely to drive in the sand. It just met its match, that's all. Yeah, but between the car's capability and my inexperience. Yeah. It's, I mean, you, gotta, you have to learn well, somehow. Nothing abnormal with what's happening. There's a lot of foot marks. Yes, sir, we walked we walk all this way back to the road. What, good, good two, three k's? Yeah, and Come on, let's, let's. also thinking to myself right this very second, I need to let some air out of these tyres. Before we turn off, maybe then that's when we, we do it. Because it's hard ground there. I do have another pressure gauge. Thank goodness. That is what we were trying to reach to go fishing.
And it's starting to rain again. There it is. There it is. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to stop on firm ground. Okay, I'm um, hopefully that strap will reach you. The ground's hard where I'm at. And we'll just do a gentle, gentle nudge back. So with my Africa Land Cruiser, I sent them a whole lot of used recovery stuff. So this was kindly donated by ARB. That looks like a pool strap to me. And that looks like a recovery strap. So what we're going to do... So when you do a, use a, a, a shackle, tighten it and come back half a turn. Okay, otherwise you might find if it's a tough pull, it's very difficult to, um, extremely difficult to undo the shackle if you do. <laughs> All right, need to bring the car forward slightly. Okay, so I'm going to pull you back. You'll feel a jerk. Okay, camera's not done this before. All right, you're going to feel a jerk. Drive the car backwards, just like you would normally do. I am going to keep the certain amount of tension. If you see something go wrong and you need me to stop, you give a long blast on the hooter. Long. You know, a good three seconds. To draw my attention. If I um, also do the same and I need you to stop, I will do exactly the same. A long heart. If you hear a long hard blast, it means something's gone wrong. Stop the car. All right. Okay. So how did that feel? It was a sudden jerk. It was more of a jerk than I thought it would be. Because you were stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were stuck and then suddenly you weren't stuck. <laughs> so that's the jerk that you actually felt. Because your vehicle literally, you could actually see your vehicle went, whoops, it went up first and then came back. I'm going to have a look at the little hole that we dug. Deep. Hmm? Well, nice and deep. Yeah. But yeah, touching. Yeah, that's where your chassis was, uh, your under your engine bay was touching there so you were resting on the front more so, mm, more so than the back We are not in particularly high spirits in uh, camp this morning uh, because of what happened yesterday. After we uh, pulled the uh, Nissan out, <coughs> I, we, I got back to camp, Cam and I got back to camp, and within about a, five minutes, we heard some yelling and screaming from the beach. It was my daughter, Erin, and her husband, uh, Liam had got himself caught in way in a rip. He was spearfishing in the lagoon. The rip took him right out. I then ran out, saw that he was actually at the line, the final last line of breakers, and between him and the sea and the shore was white water. Aaron, his wife, actually jumped into the water to try and get to him, failed. The wave, um, luckily, the wave pushed her back out, but she's covered in lacerations and very bad bruising. Um, Liam got out himself. The um, campus down the way there. Um, you see, I arrived back here, and the, there were the, the, with three vehicles and only one set of keys. And the only key that I had was mine. But the awning was up, the tent was up, everything was up. This was going to take, you know, at, at best 10 minutes 
to pack away. And um, so I yelled at the, 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 the fellow campers and I said, please just get help. I did not know what kind of help would be available. I had absolutely no idea. I then ran back here and realized I had to drive this. So I dropped the tent and could not, because of the height, on my own, could not get the awning back. Couldn't get it back. So I had to drive with it very crudely strapped up. O open, but not right open, if you know what I mean. And it was destroyed. It was completely destroyed. Uh, to cut a long story short, uh, <clears throat> the police arrived, the ambulance arrived actually pretty quickly. Police a bit longer. We're far from anywhere. We are one hour 30 to uh, Esperance, which is the, the closest center. And um, that's where they all came from. So the ambulance actually got here very quickly and they treated Liam, they treated Aaron. Aaron was in worse shape than Liam. And they were taken to hospital. We then followed in the, in the little Corolla, went there and they spent the night in Esperance. And I'm now alone in camp because uh, Kate and Gwyn have gone off to the local, uh, the other campsite here to go and have a shower and freshen up. Um, Liam and Aaron are in Esperance and Cameron's gone to collect them. And so the, there's a bit of a somber mood in the camp because we all know and we're all very keenly aware that this, have co this could have come out very differently. And that is what's getting to us. We are extremely grateful that it didn't and it actually turned out well, but that doesn't um, remove the fact that it could have turned out to be a disaster, a tragedy for the entire family. We were very lucky to get away. So I'm now making myself some coffee. What are we toasting? You, uh, we're toasting Jaffa cakes and Dr. Pepper. And why are we having Jaffa cakes and, and Dr. Toast. Pepper? Because Liam almost died. And, and, we, feel, and we feel sorry <laughs> for him. And we, we saved him. So. We're sooks, so this basically. Is a, this is our hero's um, treat. Why he only gets iron brew. <laughs> no, it's because Dr. Pepper's nasty. Uh, it's good to have the whole crew back together again. On dry land. On dry land. Part of the rescue operation and I just ran right over it because shells come and go but people are forever you know This is the prize for being the first on the beach in the morning after a terrible storm. First time in my life I've ever collected cowries. They're gonna have pride of place with my little thing things. And this is interesting too. Beautiful mother of pearl. And then this was the first in the family so it will always be the most cherished. No, that came across really badly. Wrong, wrong, wrong. One does not cherish the firstborn just because it's the firstborn. You cherish all of them equally. Parenting lesson 101. <laughs> Just 
still quite a bit of wind this morning, uh, but we're hoping for a catch or two. First cast of the morning, and this is a rat. Rats don't make the best eating. And they're very pretty. Is it a rat? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Alright, first cast of the day. Do you know how to get it off their tentacles? Well, we're going to try. We're going to try. Look at this guy. He's beautiful. No, we're not keeping him. We're not keeping him. Yeah, but we're not going to eat an octopus. Too smart. They're too intelligent. Not. Okay, we're gonna get you out of here soon. Don't stop squirting. Put him out. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I'll hold this back line. Wow, that's so beautiful. They're just the most exquisite creatures. There he goes. I mean, if I saw one of the power swimming and I, I and I saw that, it would be like a treat of life, oh, you know, to see that underwater. Why you don't go swim there? Is that where you got it? <laughs> it's been a really nice morning. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The fish are biting. And the wildlife here is fantastic. There are oyster catchers on the beach. I saw a heron. I think it was uh, we were Africa. It looked like a blue heron. Um, I'm not sure what it is here in Australia. Um, there are little oyster catchers on the beach there. They're actually endangered in much of southern Africa. Here they're called the pied oyster catcher. Um, you see this bag here that I'm carrying. You see that bag? That bag. I've got a. I'll cut in a picture here of me standing with my fishing rod outside my house in England at the time of would have been about 12 years old. I was crazy on fishing, mad on fishing. Nothing, nothing was more important than fishing. And that was my bag. That was my, this was, this was my fishing bag and I've kept it. It has a uh, nostalgic value as well as a seriously practical little, little fishing bag. Uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Yes. Fresh on chops! For Dennis. For his, it's his birthday, so we're having a seafood feast. I will dance! The event, the showing of my feature film Cry of the Kalahari, was held at the Albany Entertainment Centre. Giving me a radio mic because uh, I use my hands a lot when I talk, as you know. And uh, if I've got a microphone here, I, I can't express myself. So there you go. Following the showing, there would be a free raffle, as I explained to our guests. Good evening. Everyone, this is not a familiar place for me. Normally I just have me on my own camera, tripod, and nobody to criticize it. <laughs> Except much later when the video comes out, and they all have a go, and that's lots of fun. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, the presentation is uh, 90 minutes long, and to be honest with you, it, is, uh, it reflects an obsession. An obsession that I had, and still have, with an incredible part of the world in Botswana, the southern African country of Botswana. As you watch the film, you'll notice the quality of video will change. And really what this is, is also a walk in time through technology. The first shows were filmed with a tiny little camcorder shooting 720 interlaced video to film shot, video shot 
on 4K, also with very rudimentary uh, equipment, in 2018. And this story spans exactly 10 years, 10 years of my obsession. And that's what I'd like to present to you tonight. I'd like to thank, before we go, to go ahead, uh, with the, the sponsors, Gondwana Link, if you don't know what they're doing, very briefly, they're, they're creating a thousand kilometer long corridor of absolute natural pristine bush wilderness in southwestern Australia. And half of the, the ticket price this evening goes directly to them. And we've also been supported by um, some people that have donated some prizes, so please hold on to your ticket stubs, because after the show, we, I've got my family here, they're gonna come up, and they're also going to be filming this. I'm actually gonna put a little story together for the channel as well. We'll talk more about that later. So hold on to your stubs, and then we will then do a call out and the first person called, or I think there are 14 prizes if I'm correct, it will be first come, first choose the prizes. And we'll do that after the show. Thank you, enjoy the show. The people responsible. Wendy, Coach, Erin, Sonny Moraleen, who's going to run up right here, all of the, the uh, raffle prizes that we have. And as he brings them out, I'm going to explain what they are. So that when your number is called, you'll know what to choose. So these white packets are a uh, little token uh, channel memorabilia stuff, and that's for good reasons. Okay, very, very nice night call. Thank you, Michael, for supporting us. Uh, head torch. Unbelievably bright hand torch. Also, night call. And my very little lantern. I've reviewed it, I don't know how many times. Camping lantern. Also, night call. Thank you to them. Um, fire lighter, uh, these are very small, very lightweight, and very potent fire extinguishers. Uh, you never need to be full or anything like that, they're fantastic. Um, terrain trainer gave us some nice kits, a uh, country of pet kit. Uh, this is a, and I'm, it, it's basically it's a, it's a, an emergency water filtration system. You put it in your vehicle and you forget about it. And one day you're in the middle of the bush and suddenly you've got a water problem and all you have is grey water that you have to drink. That's what you use to purify it. Very effective. Uh, Gwyn and I wrote a book called Torn Trousers. Uh, we mentioned in the film A uh, Year in the Okavango. That's our old memoir. We would like to give that to somebody. Anybody interested in one of the best overlanding books ever written? No, it wasn't written by me. It was written by a guy called Chris Scott. Outstanding book. Thank you, Chris. And a gift pack from Terrain Tamer, I think. That's about it, that's all. I'm not too sure. Those who go together. And lastly, thank you again to Terrain Tamer for a very nice portable compressor. So now, with all I'm explain, Kate and Aaron, what they're doing now is they're filming. And um, we're actually going to make a little story about this for the channel. So forgive them, they're going to run around. The channel is all about everything we do and everything I love doing about film and telling stories is it's got to be real. We don't set up stuff. If it happens, we film it. If it doesn't happen, then we have a boring thing. And that's the way it is. We don't contrive anything. So this is them actually filming what you will see on the channel one day. So, okay. Uh, what we're going to then do after the, after, the, after the names, we're going to have a quick Q&A, followed by meeting it out in the foyer. Right, Gwyn is going to read out a ticket number. Please come up straight away and choose one of those. Just one. And... Uh, right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, door 2, H20. Come and grab yourself together. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.